Right. Well, exactly. Now, this is this is where the whole world is, I guess, currently talking about the problem that is happening in in um, in Jerusalem, um, in and around Al Aqsa, in the last, especially the last ten days of the month of Ramadan, and then it continued all the way up until another eleven days of war that Israel has inflicted upon the civilian community of the Palestine of the Palestinians now this has happened right here in 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 April all the way up to May 2021 now while this has happened it is important for us to understand the sequence of the events that have unfolded what has started what has happened is in all the last 73 years something to which every country of the world agreed upon in the United Nations including United States including the Muslim leaders of different parts of the world along with Israel itself who signed the peace accord in 1990s and again in 2000s. And based on that, there were certain borders that were drawn between Israel and Palestine as a two-state solution. While those borders were drawn, since that agreement, Israel continues to betray the entire world and betray itself. And all those who have come forward to make an agreement in order to... To make sure that peace prevails. While all of this is happening, Israel continues to evacuate, to evict, to dispossess an entire generation of Palestinians. So since 1948 it is doing, since 1967 it is doing, since 1971 it is doing, and since 1992, even after the peace accords were signed, it continues to do this up until this day. Now in this recent conflict, what has happened is Israelis started to take over the houses of the Palestinian inhabitants in the suburb or the town of Sheikh Jarrah which is an area in an, uh, within Palestine, which is an agreed upon area which belongs to the pa Palestinians. Something that even Israel has agreed to. Yet Israel breaks that, goes further up into evacuating the people, kicking them out, terrorizing the families. And if anyone protests, then they are jailed under the laws of terrorism for never to be released again. And some of them were even killed in those skirmishes that you can call or in those attacks that took place on the the owners of those houses so just imagine somebody comes and kicks you out of your own house where you have been living for generations for last 10 generations if you can't recall all of that even until the last four generations even from 1948 up until now there's families living there from for, through their forefathers yet somebody comes kicks them out and takes over the house and if that is what is happening then this was the first crime that israel committed right in this time. Then the people, when they were heading towards Masjid al-Aqsa to Jerusalem in order to pray during the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan, their pathway, the roads were blocked. There was a blockade implemented by, by the Israeli forces. When that was happening, people were getting frustrated more. Furthermore, when those people who reached Masjid al-Aqsa, who were praying in Jerusalem at Masjid al-Aqsa in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan, Israeli forces once again started to disperse them by throwing and, and shooting rubber bullets and throwing stun grenades to the extent that they even started to um, throw the stun grenades right into the mosque, into the Masjid al-Aqsa itself. Now that sparked this to, a, to an, another level altogether. So you can see the crimes were, people were evacuated, were pushed out of their own houses, people were tortured, jailed, and then the roads were blocked from entering uh, to reach to the city of Jerusalem. People who were praying peacefully at the masjid and some of them protesting were all attacked in several numbers. Almost a thousand worshippers were injured and hospitalized and a dozen people were killed. And then Israel went further to start to bomb certain locations in Gaza. With all these crimes being committed by Israel, there was no voice raised against Israel, whether from United States of America or any other powers of the world, any other Western countries of the world, including United Kingdom, Canada or Australia. None of them spoke a word against to stop Israel. This happened for a couple of days for the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. Then started the Palestinian resistance groups. They started to now throw the rockets in response to all what has been happening. Then Israel continued its bombardment and ended up killing more than 260 people, including 66 children and more than 40 women. Now, this was a crime against humanity. This can be called as ethnic cleansing. And this is something which was I mean, the making of a genocide. In retaliation, if you see the amount of damage that happened within Israel was minimal. A maximum of 12 people were killed 
according to the Israeli statistics, out of which one was the soldier. Now you can see the, the imbalance on the two sides. Now if somebody takes this moment to say there is a conflict between Israel and Palestine, then I say this is absolute hypocrisy. There's no conflict between Israel and Palestine. There is a genocide being committed by Israel against the Palestinians. That is what is the right description of what is happening. You can call it terrorism being perpetrated by Israeli government against the innocent civilians of Palestine. This is what is to be called. 